Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. One of my favorite works in the canon of science fiction is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, particularly the original BBC radio plays when the work was still completely fresh with the performers and not already being quoted by every strag in the universe. That Ray's Guide is called Ray's Guide is a bit of a homage to Douglas Adams. Anyway, this is not a video about The Hitchhiker's Guide. It is a video about towels. According to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy... A towel is about the most massively useful thing an interstellar hitchhiker can have. Partly, it has great practical value. You can wrap it around you for warmth as you bound across the cold moons of Jaglan Beta. You can lie on it in the brilliant marble standed beaches of San Trangenus V, inhaling the heady sea vapors. You can sleep under it, beneath the stars that shine so redly on the desert world of Kafaroon. Use it to sail a mini raft down the slow, heavy river moth. Wet it for use in hand to hand combat. Wrap it around your head to ward off noxious fumes, or to avoid the gaze of the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll. A mind-bogglingly stupid animal, it assumes that if you can't see it, it can't see you. Daft as a bush, but very ravenous. You can wave your towel in emergencies as a distress single, and of course, dry yourself off with it if it still seems to be clean enough. But it isn't just about the towel's amazing practical value. More importantly, the towel has immense psychological value. For some reason, if a strag, strag being a non-hitchhiker, discovers that a hitchhiker has his towel with him, he will automatically assume that he also has in possession a toothbrush, face flannel, soap, tin of biscuits, flask, compass, map, ball of string, gnat spray, wet weather gear, space suit, etc., etc. Furthermore, the strag will then happily lend the hitchhiker any of these dozen or other items that the hitchhiker might have accidentally have lost. What the strag will think is that any man who can hitch the length and breadth of the galaxy, rough it, slum it, struggle against terrible odds, win through, and still knows where his towel is, is clearly a man to be reckoned with. Now, in the verse, is there something of such astounding utility that not only is it the one thing that a spacer should have, but also be a clear indication, all other evidence to the contrary, that the spacer is not a noob a greenhorn, a tenderfoot, a neophyte, a raw recruit. Because that can be a bit of a worry in a time like a free fly event when you know you may be joined by people who have been playing the game for many years. You want to be able to stride across the landing zone as if you are a hoopy fruit who knows where their towel is. The answer, of course, is the gray cap multi-tool with a tractor beam attachment. You see somebody in the transit with a complimentary white flight suit and a helmet, you might think that they are struggling to get by in the universe. But add that yellow device to their belt and you know that they may have more than a little to know about how to get things done. And you can get so much done with a tractor beam. You can, of course, use it to load and unload cargo. But you can also use it to arrange cargo crates as barriers or makeshift fortifications. Or even hurl crates as an improvised weapon. Something it is remarkably effective at. You can use it to rapidly push or pull yourself in zero-g. You can practice your SATA ball skills. You can use it to lift an incapacitated colleague to a place where they could be safe to heal them or transport fully defeated enemies and allies in whole to a location where they are no longer needed belongings can be respectfully categorized and archived into your ship's storage or into a crate. And then you can use it to dispose of the bodies. I mean to give the fallen a respectful final repose among the stars. And that's just the most obvious uses. I'm sure that many of you have done even more creative things. But getting beyond the most obvious example, what are some of the other indications that somebody hasn't just fallen off the truck? First of all, there is the other non-weapon weapon you should always have handy, and that is a med gun. Sure, somebody will say to you, hey, you can loot my med gun to heal me, but you know what they're really thinking? What sort of a noob goes spacing without a med gun? So get a med gun, and while you're at it, also get some med pens because they're faster to use on yourself. Second, know where your helmet is. Yes, you need to take off your helmet to eat and drink and such, but put it in your backpack so you still have it with you. There is nothing worse than getting to some airless moon and realizing that not only don't you have your helmet on, but your helmet is in fact still at the space station. But maybe if you show up and still have your tractor beam, maybe someone will lend you a helmet. Which, of course, leads to backpacks and the chest armor that they attach to. It gives you a place to store all the necessities and, with the medium and larger sizes, the ability to store more weapons. It opens up that live-on-30 Altarian dollars-a-day lifestyle of just sort of finding your food and drink and med pens as you go. For the next indicator, I'll quote the king of rock and roll. What men say only fools rush in. 
Because if an elevator opens up and there's nothing inside, it isn't just a graphical thing. There really is nothing inside. Do wait that split second to see if there really is something inside the elevator. Also, rushing towards already closing doors is a mistake. The geometry in the game is real, and if there is a space that you can get caught between the two doors, yes, you can get caught in the space between the two doors. Now, if you do find yourself in an infinite fall, don't wait to hit whatever is at the bottom. Press escape and exit to the menu. The game will record you as having left the game in a non-spawnable location, and you will return to the game fully equipped in your bed. If you wait until you hit bottom, the game will record you as having died, and you will return to the hospital bed with everything you previously had on you now in some truly inaccessible location. Next for some pregame behavior, read the patch notes. In particular, read the known issues. Don't do those things. They are known issues. Nobody is going to thank you for finding them. On the other hand, trying new things and discovering problems, and this is the most important thing, reporting them to the issue council rather than whining about them, will get you regarded as a hoopty fruit. Now, I've come to discover that one of the big differences between the experiences of new and established players is that we have experienced, and now sometimes without conscious thought, avoid the situations that cause problems. Now for some in-game behavior. Don't be a chat troll. Saying racist or sexist or political or religious or whatever is the most certain sign that you are new and aren't really here for the game at all. The same thing also goes for folks who think they need to come here and tell all of us how we don't realize that the game is a scam and unplayable. Dude, we're here. We're playing it. We know full well what it does, its limitations, and how long it has taken. We already have more than fully developed our own judgments. Thank you and be gone. On the other hand, one chat behavior that ironically is an indicator of not being a noob is asking questions. That seems like a contradiction, doesn't it? Wouldn't an experienced player not need to ask questions? No. This is big and complicated enough that the experienced player has learned that they don't know everything and that asking is the best way to learn from somebody who does have that particular knowledge nugget. But if you're still worried about asking a question giving away your newbiness, here is a little suggestion. Start or end your question with the words, in this build. So, for example, how do I put things in my backpack in this build? People will presume that you're returning from having last played before the current inventory system and will explain about you how using the I key to open the inventory system and so on. You aren't a noob. You're a long-lost returning prodigal son. And not just that, but one with a multi-tool, and who knows where their helmet is. Now for an update on our giveaways, first we have our 10,000 subscriber giveaway for the LTI Hull C, the colossal cargo container carrying craft to be given away when the sea goes live, and the big annual ship wave away for the winner's choice of the Galaxy Complete, the master modular mining moving medical machine, or the Banu Big Box Bargain Bazaar known as the Merchantman. One entry per video for both giveaways, just be a member and be entered automatically, or otherwise be a subscriber and comment somehow using the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the three words to add to a question to make you not sound like a noob. Fly safe, keep it real, I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.